Uh, so there's two things I want to talk about today really. I think the first thing is tomorrow is my car show at the Shrinebrook Hotel. So we'll be talking about that. And secondly, I've still got this massive dilemma about what car to get next. So there they are, they look like bloody twins, don't they? They're literally identical looking. They've got the same wheels, uh, obviously the same body color. Uh, I've gone for the same sort of style of number plate, uh, but that one is actually coming off of that car because that's my own number plate. But that car there, for those that don't know, for, for whatever reason, that's sold, yeah? I've done a competition, competition on that recently, 25 pound ticket, and it's sold out. It's been sitting here for the last three or four weeks collecting dust because I just didn't want to drive it anymore because it just doesn't feel like it's my car now. So I've got to put it back to its original plates, get it cleaned in the morning, ready for the Shrinebrook. So that one there is now available for £19.50 at my website planetofdreams.co.uk. And the reason why I bought that car, the second one, because in the last video, I don't know if you didn't see that video, go, go check that video out. I collected that car from VW Main Dealer. It was the lowest mileage car of that kind in the country and I wanted to replicate the image of this one in another car so i've, I've even like, like i say it's got the same wheels i've put the hashtag on it stickers on here so it's the same as that one over there you can see that just about in the distance there um so this one is going to go on a journey of being tuned over the next few weeks so you'll see plenty of content on this car on my channel in the next couple of weeks so make sure you subscribe for that yeah but my plan is not really to just talk about the whole uh, car competition thing it's like i said earlier it's more about i want to talk about the show tomorrow what the plan is for the show and big t big subject of mine at the minute what car am i getting next so i think what i'll do is i'm going to jump in this one and we'll go for a little drive starting to rain now and that don't really matter when you're in a four-wheel drive car now this has been a big big thing in my head the whole four-wheel drive rear-wheel drive dilemma and one thing with a Golf R is anyone anyone could jump in the drive seat of this car and redline it and be absolutely fine driving it I do believe that with just the slightest amount of driving experience anyone can drive this car hard now I think that is the joy or the pleasure of having a four-wheel drive car now I absolutely hate being a passenger of a car I don't like it I don't like traveling as a passenger I don't like it when someone's driving hard when I'm a passenger of a car I just don't enjoy it I've had plenty of uh, I've never had a bad experience being a passenger, by the way. I just don't like it. I like to be in control. I don't like roller coasters. I don't like bloody anything that I'm not in control of. But put me in the driver's seat of anything and I will drive it to the limit as best, to as best as I can do anyway. And with a goal far, you can, it, the way it drives and performs, it just fills you with so much confidence such an easy thing to drive now the cars that i mentioned previously that i i'm considering buying are c63 amg uh, an alfa romeo julia quadrifoglio uh, an m3 and a nissan gtr yeah i was and a rs5 five cars yeah rs3 sorry five cars and um i was fully set on getting a rear wheel drive car in fact i still kind of am fully i don't know that's what this video is about. That is exactly what this video is about. The way my mind is going at the minute about the whole next car thing is <laughs> I ain't got a clue. Because the reason why I'm doing this video is because I keep getting asked, Cal, what car are you getting next? Well, everywhere I go, I was at Shrinebrook a few weeks ago, and people were like, Cal, what car are you getting next? And people think I'm lying. They're like, nah, come on, you know what car you're getting. I'm like, seriously, I ain't got a clue. They're like, come on, you've bought a car already, ain't ya? But like, nah. So, um, I wanted, I always wanted an M3, yeah? And when this uh, whole idea come up, I thought, well, let's look at other cars. Let's look at Alphas. And then I drove the Alpha 
uh, Julia Quadrifoglio, and I was very, very impressed with that car. It's an unbelievably good car, and um, I thought it's an Alpha, and it's like shockingly good, and I didn't expect it to be so good. So, um, but I couldn't get it out of my head that I really, really like the idea of a C63 AMG. So, I. Let's just get past. Oh, Mr. BMW's going over there. Thank you. I thought it's, it's without a doubt the best car of the lot. GTR is obviously four wheel drive. I don't want a four wheel drive. I want a rear wheel drive. I want four doors as well. That is my biggest must. I don't think I could would consider getting anything other than four or five doors or however you want to look at it. Um, so I'd pretty much rule the GTR out. And I thought an AMG has got a V8 bi turbo engine. That's the car, yeah and I, I looked around at a few i actually went to look at a car and i did really like it the car itself wasn't for me um but it's a car that does offer a hell of a lot yeah it's a v8 by turbo it's german you know amg have been in the business for years you can't knock what they do they do a bloody good job of their cars and i was at that point fully set on getting a c63 amg but when i drove the car that i, I test drove um, i didn't film it by the way should have done maybe um thank you they're looking at me thinking well, what an arsehole um <laughs> it just didn't put any power down like you floor it and this was a stock car yeah no tuning 510 bhp rear wheel drive car um, obviously you expect that's a lot of power going to two wheels it's gonna struggle for traction yeah but it was a dry day and it just didn't put any power down and I thought from a tuning point of view where can you go with this car I mean yeah you can say yeah my car's running at X amount of power but that power still needs to be put down to the ground and I think this is um, this is what's got me thinking about four-wheel drive again so my new dilemma is do I want rear-wheel drive or four-wheel drive? Which brings me on to the Audi RS3, yeah? An Audi RS3 is admittedly not much different to a Golf R, yeah? When I say not much different, I say I mean that from like a driving point of view. It's going to offer a very similar driving experience to my Golf R, like the, the big power one, yeah? And... I have thought about that, which is why I've ruled it out. But I've got an audience on YouTube that love, clearly love my Golf R, yeah? A lot of you lot come over to my channel because of that car. And I thought, well, what they would probably like to see is Calvin go and buy uh, the next step up, which is an RS3, and tune that. Take you along the journey, go to stage one, to stage two, stage three, or whatever. I don't know, I'm not even going to commit to how far I'll go with tuning, but you know, take you through the journey of doing bits to that car. And it is four wheel drive, it's got an extra cylinder, so we've got instead of four cylinders in the Golf R, we've got a five cylinder, which is a very legendary, like notorious Audi thing. The, the, the old Audi Quattro, the original UR Quattro, that was a five cylinder car, they sound amazing. They're very tunable, they're a tough engine, and it kind of makes sense, yeah? A lot of people have been saying to me as well, why don't I just drop a five pot in my Golf, Golf R? Why don't I just drop a five pot engine in my Golf R and drops a good one, yeah? Then I can then tune it to the next stage, which, which will take it in excess of 600 bhp. Great idea, but then you've got to get an RS3 gearbox as well because the Golf R gearbox will not tolerate the power. Then you start to think, well, I may as well just get the bloody RS3. See the dilemma? I want, this sounds ridiculous as well, I want a sunroof, yeah? An Alfa Romeo, I don't know why I want a sunroof, I just like the idea of enjoying the summer with a sunroof, yeah? I love a sunroof, I love getting the sunroof open, even in filming, like now if I'm filming a car, with a sunroof, lets a bit of light in, better for you lot to see it. That's silly stuff, I know that's very silly stuff, but day-to-day -day driving as well, it is just nice to have a sunroof, yeah? The Julia Quadrifoglio doesn't have a sunroof, and uh, because it's got a carbon roof, yeah? An M3, if you go for an M3 with a sunroof, you sacrifice having a carbon roof. That's just like the biggest 
dilemma. I don't know how M3 owners or buyers choose that as an option. I don't know what I would do. I, I would have to, you'd have to, you've got to get a carbon roof, and you can't get a car like that that has an option of a carbon roof and not go for the carbon roof option. So, I, I, I'm, I, I'm just so stuck for <laughs> every single car I look at, I, there's always sort of like a stopping point. The RS3, for me, I think, where well, it's only five cylinders. I then think, well, an Alfa Romeo's got six cylinders. An M3's got six cylinders. Why would I want a five cylinder? It's only got a single turbo. But they are massively tunable, and people on my channel will probably want to see an RS3 get tuned. So, I ain't got a clue. Uh, which way should I go? Right, left? Yeah, I'm gonna go right, I think. Get out in front of that BMW. So I think, but after driving this car, I must admit that it's flipped my mind to think, well, maybe four wheel drive is the way to go. But I am, I, I don't know. I'm not fully set on anything. Honestly, I've got no bloody idea what to do, yeah? Uh, so I just wanted to put that out in a video. Let me know, like what, what, I can't even ask you because when I ask everyone what car would you get, everyone's like, Cal get an Alpha, Cal get an RS3, get an M3. The comments just get filled up with mixed opinions and it doesn't really help me with my decision. It just makes me feel even more confused about the direction I'm going with this. But I do want to buy a car and do like a series of tuning, series of me owning this car, whatever that car is, and I want to make a real thing of it, you know? And it's got to be right. It's got to be right. And I'm a perfectionist. I like to get things right. I'm a bit OCD with getting things spot on, and it's got to be spot on. And I, I really want to get it right. So, I don't know. I think one thing I would say that I sort of has sort of sprung to mind, like a lot of people have said to go for an RS7 or an RS6, which you can get massive power out of, yeah, with ease. That's a fact. Uh, but I think the success or the the sort of the, the appeal to my Golf R is the fact that it's abnormally tuned. Obviously, you can go and buy a GTR, and it's already at stage one. It's got more power than my Golf R, but it's the fact that the Golf R is running double the power to a normal Golf R, which is just gives it so much more appeal, makes it more exciting. And I think that's what's bringing me back to an RS3. They run standard. Um, I think the earlier one's 380 brake, but the new Dazza engine is 400 bhp or there or thereabouts. A little bit more power than the other one. Um, and they've got lots of tuning capabilities. So right now, I'm feeling extremely drawn to an RS3. But then the dilemma then is, do you get a saloon or a hatch? Anyway, car show, yeah? Let me know your thoughts on all of that in the comments below because I'm curious to know what everyone thinks. I'm always open to listening to people's thoughts because it's, you know, we, you, we've all been there. You've been there yourselves buying a car and you look, you know, you can spend an extra couple of grand, can't you? Spend an extra thousand pounds, you can get more spec or, uh, I don't know, uh, I'm struggling. Alfa Romeo, let me just quickly touch on that before I move on to the next subject. I'm struggling to find an Alfa Romeo with the spec I want. There isn't a single one currently advertised with the spec that I want. Because Alfa Romeo, the way they spec their cars is they basically sell you a basic car and they charge you for everything and it ain't cheap. So a lot of people didn't spec up their Alfa Romeo annoyingly. But anyway, yeah, next subject, car show tomorrow. So as of the day that I filmed this video is not actually the day before the show. Um, I did film another video that was meant to go live today and I thought, I can't upload that video today because I want to talk about the car show tomorrow. This is a massive thing for me. It's my first ever car show and it's at the Chambrook Hotel, which is my favorite place. It starts at midday. I'm planning to get both cars there, clean, on show, um, I've also organised to get a NAFCO 54 stand. Um, I've designed that, done all that myself, been organising that in the background. Um, it Hopefully that arrives in time so I can get that set up as well. And um, so I'm going to have these two cars on show. Car Cologne are going to be there. I'm going to try and get them to sell some stuff there as well. Uh, who else is going to be there? 
lots of people have said they're coming. Ricky from Living Life Fast, um, Lenny the Gidos, Lenny Urban on Instagram now. But yeah, it's gonna be a good day, yeah? It's a day that I'm looking forward to. We've got, fingers crossed, the weather holds up. We've had absolutely loads of people register to say they're coming along, which is amazing. Bear in mind also, 5% of the ticket sales for this car is going to my charity, NICU, the Neonat Neonatal Intensive Care Unit at the Luton and Dunstable Hospital. 5% of the other Gold Fire competition, that's also going to the Neonatal Intensive Care Unit. And half of the take-ins tomorrow are going to Nikhil as well, all right? So the day tomorrow is, is about a, a, a lot of things really, but a big part of my incentive and my motive for doing tomorrow is raising money for that charity. So if you are about, starts at 12 midday, I'll put all the details in the comments below. But yeah, if you are about, yeah, hopefully it's not raining like it is right now. Um, I don't think it will be. Pop down. Starts at 12 midday, um, it's going to be till 4 o'clock. The draw for the other Golfer is going to be at 3 o'clock. If the tickets sell out uh, for this car, then we'll do the, the draw for this car as well. Um, this car's got three cash prizes of £195 each, so if you haven't entered to win this car, you can do that, like I said earlier, at planetadreams.co.uk. £19.50 and you've got four chances of winning a prize yeah and obviously the final the, the the first prize is going to be this car once it's been tuned now at this stage of my life this car isn't tuned um but this video has been filmed a week before the day of the Sharnbrook, which is a bit confusing for me filming uh but this is actually getting tuned next week so by the time the Sharnbrook show is on which might seem all I hope you can get your head around all of this by the time we get to the show this car will be tuned hopefully providing Will at VRS deals with it quick time so uh, yeah you'll be able to see it as a finished project at the show as well all right I'm gonna end it there but thank you very much for watching is it gone dark I don't know why my screen looks like it's so dark all the time um, thank you very much for watching if you like the video obviously hit like if you're new hit subscribe and before I say I'm going to see you in the next episode of Diary Car Trade, I'm going to say to you, I'm going to see you, a lot of you, tomorrow at the Shrinebrook. I'm really looking forward to that, all right? But for those that can't make it tomorrow, I'll see you in the next episode of Diary of a Car Trade, all right? Bye. In the next episode of Diary of a Car Trader, I'm going to show you how you can code your own car with the use of this thing, the Carly OBD code reader.